Ted Bundy and the Flat Tire Murders. Of all the suspects in the Flat Tire Murders, Ted Bundy draws the most attention. Of course, his notoriety as one of the most prominent serial killers in American history is a primary basis for this attention. However, law enforcement, in particular several detectives who are still alive today, maintain to this day that Ted Bundy was their suspect. The country's foremost Ted Bundy expert, Kevin Sullivan, disagrees. With Bundy's execution in 1989 in Florida, the truth most likely died with him. Given that law enforcement still considers him an obvious suspect, he deserves attention. According to several detectives, the modus operandi of the flat tire killer, specifically the murders of Ronnie Gorlin and Elise Rapp, the disabling of their vehicles and their abductions, fit Bundy perfectly. The victims were most likely deceived by their abductor, who, in all likelihood, offered them assistance for the vehicles that he had disabled. Bundy's use of deception in his Western United States murders is well documented. He would feign injuries, including the use of fake casts and crutches, to gain the trust of kind-hearted women. At Lake Sammamish in 1974, he abducted and murdered two victims using these techniques. In the flat tire murders, this technique would have been inverted, wherein Bundy would have presented himself as a good Samaritan, first by flattening the tires of the victim's vehicles and then appearing to offer assistance. Having gained control over the victims by offering to take them to a service station or to their home, he could transport them to an isolated location where he would sexually assault and murder them. It's important to note that after escaping jail in Colorado in 1977, Bundy traveled through several states, including Illinois, Michigan, and Georgia, before arriving at his destination of Tallahassee, Florida, the home of Florida State University. It was there that he committed his final murders in 1978, followed by the murder of 12-year-old Kimberly Leach. Bundy was tried in Miami for the Chi Omega sorority murders and was sentenced to death. But this was not Ted Bundy's first trip to Florida. In 1968, he had traveled from Washington to Miami Beach to serve as a delegate for Nelson Rockefeller at the 1968 Republican National Convention. The convention was held over three days from August 5th to August 8th, 1968. At that time, Bundy was 21 years old. It is unclear what Bundy did in Miami during the convention or where he stayed. While it is generally believed that he began his crimes in 1974, there is strong suspicion that Bundy was involved in the 1961 abduction and murder of Anne Marie Burr when Bundy was only 14. He is also considered a suspect in the murders of two college girls in New Jersey in 1969. As discussed more fully in my upcoming book on the subject, the medical report for the Elise Rapp and Ronnie Gorman Gorlin murders identified Ted Mundy as a possible suspect. Dr. Richard Suveron, the Miami dentist whose testimony against Bundy in 1979 by confirming the bite marks on the Chi Omega victims, was contacted in 1979 by Dade County Police to discuss evidence that may link Bundy to the flat tire murders. When Bundy was on trial in Miami in 1979, one of the lead detectives in the flat tire murders spoke with Bundy at the jail where he was being held. That officer discussed Bundy's possible involvement in the flat tire murders as well as Bundy's reaction. That detective believes to this day that Ted Bundy was involved. However, Kevin Sullivan, who has written several books on Ted Bundy, does not believe that Bundy was involved in the flat tire murders. The main argument against his involvement is that in 1975, Bundy was attending law school in Utah. But Bundy was no stranger to traveling. When he finally confessed in 1989, he admitted his involvement in murders in Washington, Utah, Colorado, Oregon, Idaho, California, and lastly, Florida. The three Florida murders were those at the Chi Omega sorority 
and the murder of Kimberly Leach. In 1975 alone, he murdered women in Utah, Colorado, and Idaho. The flat tire murders occurred in July 1975, and Bundy's killings appeared to stop during those months. Looking back, in 1974, Bundy committed at least one murder per month in every month except for August, September, and December. In 1975, he committed murders in January, March, April, May, and June. The months of July and early August, until his arrest on August 16, 1975, remain surprisingly quiet. Between the June 28, 1975 murder of Susan Curtis in Utah and August 16, 1975, when he was arrested, what was Ted Bundy doing, and where exactly was he? Bundy's connection to the flat tire murders will be explored in further podcasts, as well as in my upcoming book. I will also discuss recently uncovered evidence from the Dade County Medical Examiner discussing Bundy's possible involvement. Thank you for listening. Please leave your comments below.